SOO in my own data. Okay, so good evening. Uh, so today is our uh, second live session for this uh, metallocarbon and metallocarbon organometallic uh, this particular course. So uh, let's uh, start discussing about uh, some of the questions. Uh, here they have asked among uh, the following polymers, uh, which of them uh, go through the that step gro uh, growth polymerization reaction. So um, in the lecture, uh, Professor have, uh, will uh, describe about uh, this different type of polymerization. Just I want for before the begin, beginning to solve this kind of questions, we go through some of the steps and how uh, they are done. And then we come back to the question and correlate with the option so that it would be easier to uh, explain and understand how we can solve that. So uh, this is uh, this is a, a kind of a state goes the polymerization program you can understand. So this small cubes or uh, circles you can see they are uh, you can consider them as uh, monomer and when we do this kind of uh, step growth polymerization polymerization so one of the uh, uh, major uh, uh, one of the major uh, identification of this kind of monomer are uh, they are actually uh, bifunctional means uh, they have two, you can uh, say, they have like two hands where uh, different or same uh, uh, functionalities are there. So that can interact with uh, each other. So that's how these monomers have two hands or two ends that can uh, interact with uh, another monomer molecule so that they can grow and make a large uh, polymer. So here the main uh, driving force is the reactivity of your functional groups namely and so this is how it this it can be formed so at first here you can see that two monomers at first can react like this and uh, the solution uh, any of uh, two can react and that can make this kind of dimers and followed by uh, one uh, trimer so one dimer molecule so it have now two hands so one of the uh, reactive site can interact with your another monomer and can make this kind of uh, uh, it is reacting with this so this kind of uh, trimer so that's how it is actually growing so here you can see that mono uh, that monomer to dimer dimer to trimer and here uh, this uh, dimer and this dimer they interact so they form here a tetramer and in that way the linkage can grow, grow and you can have a larger molecular weight of the uh, polymer. So uh, in this way, uh, step by step, the growth of the polymer chain happens. So that's how uh, this name came, step growth uh, polymerization. So uh, one thing uh, for uh, this kind of uh, polymerization is they are actually, uh, the activities are slow. Uh, means the yeah, monomers and dimers, they are a stable uh, a molecular species. So uh, when it try to react with the other monomer and uh, or any dimer or trimer, so to increase the chain length, the reactivities become slow and slow. So that's how uh, uh, the uh, reaction uh, become uh, so much sluggish and eventually it stops. So that's how uh, uh, this kind of reaction happen. So here you can see uh, the molecular weight versus conversion. So it's uh, uh, in that way very slowly it goes and 
you can uh, expect to have a graph like this of a certain point in in it uh, can increase the uh, highest uh, molecular rate. So that's how it uh, have this kind of uh, 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 kind of curve you can obtain for this kind of process. And because to uh, gain the maximum uh, molecular weight, you need to go step by step. So here you can see that maybe two uh, large uh, chains have been formed and this is the last uh, bond formation. So that's why when the, that particular last bond form, it uh, reaction stops and that is your highest uh, chain length having a largest uh, molecular weight. So that's how this particular reaction is. So here you can see uh, some of the examples of that. So here, uh, so we, so this is the uh, skip center here, and with oxygen and copper, you can generate that not radical and uh, and in some radical way, this kind of uh, polyether can be formed, and this particular chain can grow. Can grow. So that's how uh, this thing would happen. And for uh, this kind of cases, so X or Y, X are uh, generally halogen. And Y are, uh, you said, this type of carbonyls, carbonyl bond or SO2. So you know, this is also some of the examples of uh, this kind of uh, step growth polymerization. So when you have this kind of uh, bifunctionality, so uh, both of the end are uh, functional and with this kind of uh, condition uh, at plus sulfur can attack and it can have a uh, kind of S minus Na plus with uh, this thing and followed by another monomer it can interact. So here you have chloro. So normal electrophilic aromatic substitution, how it happened, and followed by uh, the growth. So that's how uh, this thing grows. So here we have uh, not as uh, much control. So uh, with the reaction condition, how much uh, the chain will be forming, that's completely dependent upon your substrates and uh, what any profile or uh, react, um, reagents that you are using. So completely based upon that. And for uh, this kind of case, uh, so it is also having a uh, bifunctionality. So both are both in are in H2 means nucleophilic. And for this, here you are seeing that uh, both both ends have uh, electrophilic uh, options. So anhydride is there. So in H2 will uh, uh, first nucleophile and keep this bond. And again, in H2 can attack also here. So that's how again uh, that amide bond is forming in here as it, and that's how uh, the chain would uh, grow like this. And lastly, uh, this this is you can say that termination step. So uh, last amide bond formation, so that uh, this kind of uh, functionality or uh, linking is there, and this is the biphenyl. So this is also an example of this kind of step goes polymerization because here you are seeing that amide bonds are forming and that's the reaction which is uh, increasing the uh, chain length of your uh, molecule. So that's the uh, step growth uh, polymerization. So there are uh, many examples. Some of them here you can uh, see actually. So um, here you are seeing that again, uh, two functionalities are there, uh, both ends having acid and another part having uh, which means uh, they are nucleophiles so, uh, dihydroxy compound and in the same way uh, so uh, at first a star bond would be forming so here you can expect to form a polymer like uh, this one and here again all uh, the same thing repeat and Again, it is OH, so again, it can interact with another uh, biphenyl uh, molecule and followed by uh, the chain group. 
so that's how uh, the two functional or two uh, functional groups shall be are for your, your electrophilic part and nucleophilic part and that's how the chain is good so uh, this is a uh, uh, polyester linear form so that's how uh, particular step both polymerization occur for this step uh, now coming to the next uh, one so it need not to be the uh, one monomer or two monomer they can be uh, uh, in, uh, uh, multiple or many number of uh, monomers you can use so here we have uh, seen that x means it has three reactive sites so here it is a two so they are they are, the meaning of that are that uh, reactive centers so here you are seeing that uh, two functionalities are that in your a molecule and b molecule have the same so that's the significance of this particular number and when you have used that this particular uh, combination. So here you are seeing that it has uh, three uh, reactive centers, it means three carboxylic groups are there. So here they have uh, uh, shown it like A3. So acid molecule having uh, three uh, reactive centers. And A2, A2 means uh, by another part. So this is like this. And this is the nucleophilic or uh, nucleophilic part, you can say. So they are the alcohols that uh high hydroxy compounds so they are having the same uh, uh two, two reactive centers so it is b2 so that's how uh a b type uh thing they have uh given so here when you uh make the polymerization so you can expect to form this kind of uh polymer because uh this uh this a3 would be in the center and uh, along with this line, the polymer can, can be. So here you can expect to form uh, this kind of uh, branched uh, polymer. And uh, this, uh, the AT, the substitution is the reason for that. So that's how you can uh, vary the, uh, the chain uh, properties of uh, polymers. And uh, lastly, uh, they would affect your uh, final property of the material that you are making or want to make. So that's how you can uh, control this kind of thing. So this is uh, another one. So here you are seeing that in the same molecule, uh, the uh, uh, A, B, both forms are there. So this is your electrophilic part here, the attack would happen or attack would occur. So one reactive part, so that's why A, and the basic parts so nh2 nh3 so it is two so that's how uh it's given as a b2 so it can also be used for uh this kind of uh, polymerization so when here you do the reaction you can uh synthesize and here it would be nh so let me draw the another molecule So NH2, NH2, and here you have uh, this particular group. Now NH2 can attack uh, in that uh, carbonyl and this kind of uh, amide bond are forming. So you are uh, having this kind of uh, thing. So uh, in this particular site, you can expect to have a kind of preposition. Uh, Uh, this kind of thing so here again the chain can uh, grow so that's how that poly polymer can uh, grow and make chain. so that stuff in the same molecule itself so it's called uh, polyurea branch so the same 
molecule you can uh, have this kind of functionality so that uh, this kind of shape both thing can offer this is one of the examples now here you are seeing that uh, a2 means a, a two acidic center or acceptor center so c basic or nucleophilic centers and again another basic that's how uh, a2 b3 b1 so this kind of and obviously they would uh, react accordingly and uh, can grow the chain length and it is uh, another example so here two active si uh, sites a2 uh, three nucleophilic sites one here it is many it is uh, six actually one two three four five six so six hydroxy groups are there so that's how it's uh uh p6 they have denoted and here they have increased the uh, more uh nucleophilic center so uh three 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 uh, so ohs are there so means nine so that's how p so this is one of the examples for that now coming to your uh question so there we are asked for this kind of uh material so polystyrene for styrene you can see uh normal when you consider the monomer so you have this kind of functionality and uh, itself uh, they cannot react because double bonds cannot react so they are uh, only they are uh, they can be reacted if you generate that uh, kind of radical initiator is there or some uh, other reason but uh, they are in general not uh, uh, reactive to each other if you uh, do not have a particular uh, reaction condition so mainly when polystyrene are uh, made uh, they are made according to uh, uh, this kind of paroxy compound where you can use that Radical initiator and followed by this kind of polymerization. So, uh, for, uh, where radical polymerization happens, not uh, stable. So, radical polymerization, you can say they are uh, chain, uh, no, they are for uh, chain growth polymerization, not uh, stable. So, uh, uh, styrene would not be your option. So, for uh, PVC, so this is also one of the option. But here you are seeing again that monomer has uh, that. Double bond. So only way that can be formed is via this free radical uh, reaction. So radical is very much important, and that uh, goes to your uh, chain growth polymerization, not stable, because they are very much fast, and uh, the reactive species. So here you are going to generate one radical, and radicals are very short lived, and they react very much fast. So uh, for the curve, when you see. So, you kind of see this kind of thing not uh this low increase so uh the reaction rate is very much fast and that would go under your uh thin growth uh polymerization so now we can uh, eliminate this polystyrene or polyvinyl chloride is the option so we're only left with uh this uh uh, nylon 60. So here, nylon 60, you are seeing that some kind of thing what we are uh, explaining about step growth polymerization. Right. So it is, you can say, a 2 B2 type, right? Because uh, uh, we have two acid centers and two basic NH2 centers. So uh, that amide bonds we are going to form, and in that way, it can go. So it is uh, like a 2 B2. And uh, this kind of case and this can go that uh, uh, make that linear polymer so that's how actually that uh, nylon 66 can be. so the right option would be c <laughs> and uh, that's that uh, that's and uh, that's the way you can uh, solve this kind of uh, So there is another thing. Uh, so this is the right option anyway. But uh, what is that polybutadiene? So here I have shown that also. Uh, so this is that uh, butadiene. You, you are seeing four uh, carbons and two in so butadiene. 
Now, when you uh, do the polymerization over here, again, the functionality is only your uh, double bonds, and again, they are not uh, in EFTB. Like, uh, am I uh, like in H10C2 because uh, not electrophilic means electrophilic? That kind of reactivity is not present for this kind of cases. So, for here, we need uh, some reagent, rather, sometimes you can use that uh, radical ones like uh, previously we were using, but uh, uh, for this particular cases, generally, this kind of uh, lithium uh, based uh, reagents are used, or sometimes you can say that uh, quick nut based is in, in uh, MGBR, so that's uh, there, but majorly this kind of lithium based uh, reagent is used. So, here you can uh, expect that anionic uh, polymerization type uh, reaction is uh, to certain. So, when you have uh, this kind of nucleophile, which is anionic, it can actually add to your uh, double bond. So, R L I. But cell negative power, you can expect this kind of anion to ha have, and this kind of attack would be happening, and they are that kind of uh, stabilization. So, this is actually that initiator, and you generate this kind of anionic species which is reactive. Now, it would uh, react with your another monomer, right? And that's how uh, that anion charge would uh, move to your head to tail and it would grow like uh, this way. So that's how it can uh, grow. And, but the, uh, so that's how that uh, uh, ring would be, uh, so that chain would be chain growing. And then that is the uh, anionic polymer. So for hair termination, so this kind of electrophile is used. So for uh, some, uh, uh, sometime when you, uh, want to stop the reaction, you can uh, use this kind of uh, reagent where it having electrophiles so that minus charge would attack to your electrophile and it would get neutralized. Of course, there that eliminating agent is, uh, sorry, the living group is bromine. The Br minus is removed uh, 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 from this kind of system and the uh, uh, same growth would be stopped like this. So that's how the termination can be taken care of. And again, uh, with uh, this anionic polymerization, you can have this kind of control. What, what, uh, what is uh, very much missing for this kind of uh, step growth polymerization? Because they are stopping the reaction is not because anyway, they are, are not very much uh, reactive. So it completely depends upon your uh, uh, substrates main. main, main. So here are uh, another possibility. So in the uh, tail end or in the uh, terminal position, it can attack obviously, but there are much more possibilities. Because uh, all the positions are quite uh, uh, same in the same way they are reacting. So uh, difference of reactivity is only because that uh, that of your uh, uh, or what to say that uh, bulkiness uh, or general stereochemistry because it is much more uh, uh, having facing stereo interaction and it is much more so that's only difference but obviously it can attack what this can okay so when you attack this center you, you would uh, expect to generate this kind of branch system and not only that where we are forming uh, mainly E because of their stability, but sometimes this kind of G conformation is also there. So E, Z, this kind of things are there, one, two addition, one, four, uh, six addition, they are also there. So uh, you can expect to have uh, this kind of reactivity. And at last you are, can you mute? Okay. Uh, so in that way, uh, your uh, polymerization polymer chain can grow. So here you can see that when, when uh, this one four addition happens, uh, you can have that linear thing. When one two kind of thing would happen, you would uh, have this kind of uh, branch, right? So that's how this kind of branching is there for this kind of polymerization. And if you uh, see that bigger picture, this is your uh, 
isoprene units that's fine but the, the typical picture is this kind of branching because of ha having this kind of length so this is linearly grown and this is that branching so that's how this kind of uh, uh molecular structure you can expect to form for a kind of so that's regarding your uh, poly uh, diene uh, kind of uh, molecules. So again, they are not uh, same group, they are same growth polymerization. They come under same growth polymerization. So now coming to uh, the next problem. So uh, what we are, uh, I'm telling that same growth polymerization, how that happens. So for uh, this kind of, uh, and uh, discussing that we already discussed some of the radical uh, chain growth and some of the anionic chain. Now, uh, let's go one by one. So uh, first option they have given is your condensation polymerase. So we need to know what is that at first. Uh, so we can consider this kind of cases because when we do this reaction, we are eliminating one H2 molecule. So maybe they are uh, kind of condensation and for NH2 again we are uh, removing or removing one small H2 molecule so that's how it happens and for uh, these cases you generate HCl when you have let's say a star then you would generate some ethanol so this kind of small uh, molecules should be removed from the system and what are called that uh, condensation uh, polymerization so uh, this uh, examples of that so uh, polymerization uh, involves condensation. So removal of small molecules from your system, uh, such as water, methanol, this kind of small molecules should be uh, removed as a byproduct. So natural proteins, uh, they are actually a common example of this kind of polymerization because they are what is happening for amino acids. You have this acid center and another uh, part having H2. So when uh, this amide bond forms, you remove one H2 molecule from your system. So for uh, all that natural uh, polymer that is, are present, so natural proteins, they are actually uh, the uh, example for natural uh, polymer. So there, this H2 is removed. And for nylon, uh, so that step with polymerization. So they are also we are removing one H2 molecule. So this is the one of the example of nylon because here that H2 gen is six and it is that is called nylon six six. Obviously the other variants are there, but the main thing is uh, how you are forming by first condensation reaction. So they are also you can say they come under that uh, step growth polymerization process. And for uh, this kind of uh, case, so this is also. Uh, polyethylene uh, this rep so they are also example of uh, this kind of polymerization mix. so this is for condensation now coming to your uh, chain growth polymerization so they are asking that uh, coordination catalytic polymerization is an example so for coordination so uh, like metal allicin so metals uh, when metals are used so for that kind of cases, we are asking what is the uh, what is the uh, right option would be to uh, categorize this kind of reaction. Uh, so when you have uh, that mainly metal, like uh, namely you can use that kind of uh, sandwich molecules, so which are occurring to your coordination chemistry. Or a uh, signal not how you can also say because they are also the one coordinating center will be taken and that participates in the uh, reaction. So for that kind of cases, the particular not a catalyst or kind of metallo allicins. So they want to know what as a category. So for that kind of cases, again, you are uh, generating some of uh, so they are actually the reagents, right? That activates your uh, double bond uh, or some other functionality so, like condensation reaction they not have they didn't happen so you need some kind of activation or some reagent so uh, that also come under your uh, total uh, sorry, uh, your single uh, polymerization so i will discuss a bit 
that's how it is also chain group polymerization uh, radical polymerization so they are not radical polymerization but radical polymerization we need some some mainly this one of rough sides uh, or some abn type uh, radical initiator so that you can generate one uh, radical speed. and then it undergoes uh, that this kind of reaction which is also uh, chain growth polymerization but uh, uh, radical polymerization and uh, coordination catalytic polymerization they are different because for this we use this kind of metals and we uh, put one vacuum side and so oxidative addition, reductive elimination. This is the working principle for this kind of uh, catalytic uh, polymerization. But for radical chemistry, so that's different. So it is not the option, and we can that way you can choose that uh, why it is the chain growth polymerization. Now uh, let's uh, discuss about some of the uh, chain growth polymerization. So uh, as we are uh, telling that we need some kind of activator and generally they are yeah, double bonds are double bond species are there so they are not uh, reactive without any reagent so we need some of the initiating agents namely you can say that uh, radical initiator or that coordination chemistry of uh, that catalytic uh, metals are required to make this kind of double bonds reactive so we need some external uh, initiating species that let's consider that as uh, this uh, which actually initiates uh, or makes one of the reactive center in the monomer molecule. Now, uh, this kind of species are very much reactive. So that's why uh, the chain growth polymerization, if you consider the carb, they would be very much fast. So here it is molecular weight and here it is completely. So the reaction rate is very much faster because you are seeing that they are very much reactive or uh, short lived. So every intermediate that you are generating, they prone to uh, react with another species. Uh, and uh, that's why this reaction is faster. So this is your uh, chain growth polymerization. And for, for your uh, step growth, what we are discussing the first question so it is uh, a good polymerization for this kind of cases it is slow reaction so that's how slowly the chain grows and if the intermediate is stable one so that's depend uh, how it can uh, uh, grow the maximum molecular weight that it can achieve. so when you generate uh, this kind of reactive species so it can again uh, react with another monomer molecule and uh, then this is actually the initiation step and then polymerization or uh, steps happens like this and it can uh, repeat uh, the reaction condition how you want to uh, quench that uh, radical or reactive species so that you can carry and uh, that's how that this kind of particular uh, polymerization occurs. Now, this is some of the examples how you can do that. So, uh, this is actually firstly we are going to discuss about uh, radical polymerization. So, uh, generally, this kind of par acid for uh, are used for this because uh, in heating condition you can uh, uh, generate this kind of uh, CO2 molecule. And uh, this is eliminated from your system, and you are going to generate this kind of uh, radical. So that's how so this radical or this radical, anyway, you can see. Okay? So CO dot can also be possible, or sometimes uh, normal, normal pH dot is also possible. So that's how uh, with heating condition, with homolytic cleavage of this proxy bond, you are going to generate this kind of radical. So they actually act as an initiator for uh, this uh, radical polymerase. So uh, IBN, okay, uh, one of the famous examples so is eliminating nitrogen gas is your initiating uh, reagent. Because now uh, it can also act as a uh, uh, Radical initiator.
Yeah. So after uh, these, uh, one of the uh, generation of uh, this kind of thing. The fat butyl uh, group is there like this, and here you can generate this uh, methyl dot that because acetone molecule is you are making and subsequently this is your reactive species which is that's why it's not initiator or sometimes uh, for, uh, for uh, termination step it also you can use uh, and for this kind of species what we are i'm telling earlier that co2 is removing and ph is also that reactive species so that's how uh, initiation happens uh, now after initiation, uh, you can have this kind of RO dot. Now that can actually uh, react with your double ball because they are very much reactive and they are reactive towards your uh, kind of, uh, double bond of your uh, molecule. So after first attack, it, the monomer you generate this particular thing. So this is your initiation step. Now obviously it's going to react with your another. Uh, like this and subsequently it will grow and grow and grow that's how that uh, polystyrene jet uh, that can be grown with uh, this kind of um, radical polymerization reaction so now uh these are the so now the uh, thing is how that same chain termination uh, step happens so when you have uh this kind of large polymeric chain so what can happen that uh, two radicals can combine like this. So kind of recombination uh, thing can happen and uh, you can have this kind of carbon-carbon uh, bond. Now here it, there is no reactive center because they are coins by each other. And that's how that uh, chain termination occurs like this. With combination is one of the options. Another, another option is uh, dispropagation. So let's see how that thing happens. So here, one of the uh, uh, end radical can abstract one of the each dot from this kind of uh, species. So when it uh, abstract one of the each dot, you it is it going to be quenched because uh, carbon hydrogen bond is forming and no other reactive center left. So that's how this particular thing is quenched uh, and dispersed. Uh, and so that's termination of it. And for this piece is what is happening. So uh, each dot is uh, taken just so here you have dot and here dot. So they just form that particular kind of double bond. That's the, this particular uh, chain is also uh, uh, there are no reactive uh, species is here. So, uh, but the good thing is here you have double bond. So it is just a starting material from uh, the earlier one and if you have any art dot left that can again attack and can do so that's how uh, this kind of thing can uh, bond for this kind of uh, so last uh, lastly also you can think of to make them uniform you can do that hydrogenation so it would be fully saturated and uh, in groups are now equal uh, can see that they are similar. So that's how uh, lastly you can uh, do, uh, to make that uh, make your uh, uh, polymer uniform. So that this kind of uh, way are start there to uh, uh, which are responsible for your chain uh, termination. So uh, this is another example. So it is called uh, chain transfer. So uh, what is happening? It's uh, see, uh, so when uh, you have generated this kind of polymer after termination, so let's say you have formed this particular. Now, the another uh, radical species can again react with your molecule and can abstract that uh, hydrogen. Because hydrogen is dot formation is very much uh, easy for this kind of uh, radical chemistry. And Subsequently, subsequently, you are generating one secondary radical, which is also uh, very much stable. So the uh, kind of cases are there. Now, uh, this particular chain is there. Now it can react with your 
another uh, polymeric chain like this or it can take another proton from the chain itself like this way and this can again go to the previous uh, way what we have seen this kind of termination so what happens for medical chemistry so uh, that is no actually proper control is uh, we are losing so uh, for uh, this kind of cases no branching is very much uh, famous and this generally happens like this and so that's why they are generally low density polymer we observe uh, for this kind of uh, radical chemistry and that's how uh, this chain transfer occurs also and this is uh, that uh, some design advantage of your uh, radical polymerase but obviously they are very much uh, fast in reactivity you can uh, in the uh, if you want to make this kind of low density polymer obviously going to use that and that's the uh, way of radical polymerization and how they can uh, undergo this kind of polymerization reaction and it generally comes under this chain growth polymerization now in the chain growth another uh, possibility is your cationic uh, chain growth polymerization so uh, the first case what we have seen that we are generating radical in uh, like with the initiators like uh, IBN some para paracid so then that is reacting to your olefinic unit and the double bonds and uh, C dot secondary primary radicals are forming and they are doing that chain growth thing. for cationic uh, polymerization what we are going to do we are going to generate some cation so for that case, that reagent we are going to use is some acidic uh, reagent, so it's HI, HCl, HBr. So this kind of case uh, reagent, we can generate uh, uh, carbocations which reacting to your this uh, olefinic bubble bond. So when uh, you have this, uh, so here they have shown from that for this kind of cases, one thing is in there this electron donating. Why it is in this? Because uh, when uh, so because of its uh, ability of this kind of but when you have this electron donating group so after formation of this kind of carbocation it is stabilized because this electron donating group can uh, donate that electron in, in, in this uh, carbon and uh, particular this kind of uh, carbons are uh, stable that's how uh, some uh, stability is obviously required for reaction to go and uh, uh, electron donating group actually helps for this cationic chain growth polymer. So when we have used, uh, we can use this kind of monomer uh, and it reacts with HI and it can act like this one and it can generate this particular carbocation. Now, now when that initial uh, initial initiation happens or uh, activation happens now it can with your monomer can interact with another reactive species with other monomers and chain can go like this and it can uh, finally form this kind of monomeric so that's the principle of cationic uh, chain growth and uh, so this is some of the examples of that so with BFT, so this kind of Lewis acid, uh, they can be used uh, for uh, this kind of uh, activation. And you can generate this carbocation and again, it will grow like this. And with repeat, you can, you can go grow your molecule like that way. And lastly, with one, uh, one elimination means H plus would be removed and you are going to generate one double bond. And that's how that chain termination can happen. Or you can say uh, some H minus or O H minus if it is there, that is also can be interact with your own molecule and can terminate that uh, step. So that's uh, different possibilities. This is, this is one of the example of that. So polyisobutylene. Uh, so they are actually butyl rubber. So that's how uh, that terminating group can be uh, uh, present in your point. So now after cationic, uh, the one thing remains is your anionic in good polymerization. So firstly, you are uh, using cat uh, radicals, then 
Ethereum now anion. So anions can also be used for this. So uh, one of the example we have just shown, uh, we have just seen is uh, this kind of uh, cyclobutadiene. So here what we are using, we are using this particular region, RLI, which is nothing but that nucleophile, and we are generating that carbanion. And this carbanion is responsible for uh, uh, this uh, chain growth uh, polymerization for this kind of species. So this is the example of uh, anionic uh, chain growth polymerization. Now coming to this case, okay, so here. So uh, if you have uh, this kind of uh, monomer where you have electron ring, so obviously for cation we need electron donating group to stabilize carbocation and for uh, carbanion. We need electron withdrawing so that it can be some way, some way uh, dispersed in that uh, electron withdrawing group and it can have some of some uh, stability. So that's the reason for it. With nucleophile, you can uh, expect to have an attack like this because that anion should be here to have uh, some interaction with electron withdrawing group so that it can be somewhat stable. Now, uh, after that, you can react or so that your monomer can react with another monomer units and that's how this particular thing can grow like this and you can end up with uh, this particular monomer. So the same uh, example what uh, we have seen. So with uh, this kind of polystyrene unit, you have uh, this uh, lithium reagent which is acting as a nucleophile and it's just that going to attack your uh, this particular center, terminal center. And here you have that uh, urban ion and which is having some of this some amount of stability with your phenyl ring because uh, this can be uh, in resonance from like this. So that's how that some stabilization is required. And here you are going to generate that uh, anionic species. So that's why that is amazing. Now with this particular end, you can uh, grow the chain like this and you can have some linearity of the system and you can uh, uh, generate this kind of polystyrene molecule and after uh, several cycles when you want to uh, terminate you come uh, at a uh, electrophilic source like some acid H plus or some uh, sometimes uh, some uh, uh, bromo source like uh, BR, so that also can be used like to have used for uh, this case and also for this case, some electrophilic uh, center you can use to uh, terminate uh, the chain and can have uh, this kind of uh, polystyrene. So that's how this thing can work. This is another example. So it's cyano, uh, the nitrile group, which is well known for its minus r minus i effects and here the negative can be against uh, in that way it can be uh, resonance stable and uh, that's how your anionic chain good polymerization works so that's regarding your uh, what we are discussing about is uh, your chain growth uh, polymerization and we have uh, discussed uh, how that uh, having this Radical polymerization and ionic and cation. Just uh, this and technique we can see for your skin growth polymerization. Yeah. So here they have asked that uh, which one of the following following polymerization is an example of uh, living radical polymerization. So, uh, nitroxide mediated polymerization, <laughs> atom transfer polymerization, or uh, raft uh, polymerization. So, some well known uh, methods. So let's, let's discuss one by one so that we can understand. So, the answer of is obviously going to be all of them are above, all of the above, because all of them actually are the examples of this uh, living radical polymerization. So, they uh, comes under that thin growth uh, radical uh, polymerization process, but how this thing also works. Now, uh, in that way we can explain this. So, uh, this is the example of uh, 
by your next side imaged radical polymerization. So they are for this case here you can see they are using them. So other uh, other also uh, nitroxide mediated radical uh, initiators are there, but uh, is uh, the famous one of the famous uh, reagents for trapping of radicals. We all know. Uh, or another uh, other chemistry when we need to trap radical. This is uh, also can be used, but uh, and for this kind of cases, it used for polymerization also. They are can be they can be used. So at first, uh, we need uh, this kind of activation of peroxide, and you have uh, this kind of uh, activation. So at first, we need an activator. The initiation is required. Now with uh, what we are uh, telling earlier that how when we trap radical we use tempo and here they are got trap and that radical uh, points like OCON this particular bond is one. So for uh, this kind of uh, molecule so advantage they are actually uh, reversible uh, and so in heating condition or uh, some uh, heating condition maybe we can uh, go back to our uh, radical and a node or so that's uh the some of the way we can say to control your radical polymerization because previously what we are seeing for radical polymerization that they are very much reactive and you have not not such control because it can uh, grow in your because they are very much reactive so uh any center uh, anyway they are they can be grow uh Grown field, so no such control is there. Control that reaction, uh, these particular things are incorporated. So nit uh, uh, nitroxide, some transfer and uh, reversible addition. So all are for um, uh, gaining some control over this kind of medical polymerization. So this is one of the example of that. On now with uh, heating condition, what we can do uh, that we can uh, let's revert back to your radical and that can again react with your um, monomer unit when it can grow. So like this way you can say that uh, uh, this, this is kind of uh, uh, termination events we are doing but here we are uh, fully controlled. It is very much uh, controlled because it is reversible and this particular uh, thing can be uh, reversed. So that's the way to control that your uh, Reactive species. So that's how we are uh, gaining control and with uh, different heating conditions. And we, with our requirement, we can actually stop the reaction or blow uh, that uh, your polymer. So that's how the control is there. And nitroxide actually helps for that. So that's how that naming name came that living radical polymer. So, uh, this one of the example, uh, so not only the impose this kind of nitroxide, they are also used to their, uh, uh, they are also used and how uh, is, uh, so this is one of the example we can say, uh, kind of nitroxide mediated uh, polymerization chemistry and uh, PDI, uh, they are assuming is 1.1 and 1.12, I think that's good and conversion uh, and deals also they are uh, mentioning so here, here what we are saying so as we have some uh, control so with very much high, high heating condition 125 degree and with having that uh, time of uh, the reaction for our hour we can control this particular step in heating condition they can uh, revert back to your, its uh, reactive so that's how it is controlling and heating uh, only with heating condition you can control that. Now you come to your uh, radical transform uh, transfer polymerization. So again, uh, this is for uh, gaining control again. So that actually we are, are doing. So this is called actually dormat species or dormat space. Uh, this are your dormat uh, species or space you can say. Where reaction is stopped, but we can uh, revert back to it. Tips to it. So they are not fully terminated, uh, which is in our system where we can 
that in control with different reagent, we can revert back to it. Uh, reactive substance or met to reactive form, so uh, that's how it can be controlled. Now, coming to your uh, atom transfer uh, radical poly polymerization. So, for uh, this kind of cases, we uh, generally use some uh, mainly this copper uh, mediated reagent. And your monomers are like this kind of halides are used, so chloro, chloro, bromo, uh, in that way, so that we can control this kind of. Uh, Uh, so that's the way to uh, have control. Now, so let's look at some examples. So here you have uh, a light species. Uh, so a light species are just like this and with copper one uh, with ligand. So uh, you can react with fluoro component, they can be reduced. Uh, sorry, they, are, they can be oxidized to one to two part, and here you are generating what hydrox. So, so redox reaction happens for this kind of atom transport polymerization reaction. So copper one to two uh, this oxidation, and uh, here uh, is the uh, reduction. So uh, it is oxidizing, so it, it is reducing means one of the electron uh, when oxidation is happening, it's transferred to your. Uh, system so it is uh, uh, quite actually so left on transfer reaction yeah so that's so that uh, electron transfer reaction happens for this case so they are red off active and that's how you are generating radicals followed by uh, metal or other monomeric unit you can expect to grow from kind of radical uh, to uh, so let's say uh these two are the reactive species so when you have a uh, dot and p dot so they can combine and let's say again they are going to combine with your copper unit so again you are going to generate that dormant in the same way we are generating that unreactive phase of the molecule and we can have some so that's the whole point of this kind of living uh, polymerization chemistry. So this is one of the examples with polystyrene and uh, this particular reactant which uh, having halide can act uh, react with uh, this kind of carbromide this is your ligand or something in heating condition you can have this kind of polymer so there are so the example so if you have this kind of unit where you have uh, this any bromo uh, substituents are there you can uh, grow the polymer like this also so you can uh, uh, handle that uh, macromolecular structure of your uh, of your uh, polymer like this so uh, now uh, let's discuss it uh, properly so when you have uh, this particular styrene and this secondary uh, bromo reagent, uh, uh, another monomer we can see. So they are compatible to each other. So that's why they are chosen and with copper uh, bromide. So this is the uh, reactant that uh, uh, copper one, which is needed for uh, one electron transfer. So how it is happening at first, uh, in the same way. So here it is, uh, you can see. That's how it is. So it uh copper uh bromide. This is activated like this, and you are having this kind of uh, Now it can react with another species of bromo or your uh, styrene molecule, and it can grow like this. Now, lastly, after growth, so when you have uh let's say. Uh, 
data several uh, in our phone uh, formation end up in a situation like uh, this way where you have now this kind of uh, radical now it can uh, have radical so uh, can react with your uh, here minus unit and it can be quenched and have this kind of with uh, copper bromide is always there now it is your uh, dormant and with heating condition we can do the further reaction with uh, the oxidation so for that we need some of the heat so it is goes there and you generate uh copper one to copper two and again you you're flowing or the active space you can uh, regenerate so here because of the control is uh, there that's how we can uh, control it but uh, Uh, so lastly when have what happens so if you have uh, many copper to uh, oxygen because going to destroy cementic or uh, more so when you have many more charge species like this so you come to a phase where your uh, in spite of generating this medical it is not quite reactive because you have uh, generated so much copper to unit so that's how that uh, this uh, growing phase is actually uh, quenched. So uh, after a certain limit, this particular species you can observe and they are not uh, in its growing phase, mainly they want to stay in that this kind of phase. So the south chain can be terminated after prolonged uh, reaction. Now coming to your another thing which is raft polymerization or namely reversible addition fragmentation chain transfer polymerase so for raft uh, again they are obviously radical mediated and the principle is the same you the reactive species what we are generating that will be reacted to some species so that you can have control over the reactive species so that's the main idea for that so in the first case we have use nitroxide for the second case we are we have used copper bromides for these cases for raft so this is called the raft reagent so this kind of sulfur based reagents are used for this kind of raft polymerization so this uh dithio ester so dithio ester they are actually raft reagents and obviously at first we are going to use that AIB one initiator just like your uh, all other chemistry at first uh, we need one of the initiator and the quencher or control which is nitroxide here copper here it is uh ester so with kind of uh thing this can be formed with uh this polymethyl uh with a trilate having uh number average close to 66,200 uh, ton by 1.12 for this trilic acid to polyacrylic acid again you also can receive kind of data and they are all example of your raft polymer so that's how your raft polymerization works so uh, what happens at first, you have that initiator, means your AIBN or any part of the like with uh, that initiator, with the monomer, you are going to generate this uh, uh, M dot and generally they are going to uh, have some interaction with each other and uh, make some uh, one intermediate polymer species having some length which is having a radical and which is uh, the initiation step we can say. That's how your propagation step works. 
polymer with uh, number of uh, monomer that are going to attach. Now, the certain, uh, certain uh, growth, you can add that rest reagent, dithio ester. That can act like react with your polymer uh, radical like this. So this P dot can uh, react with your sulfur synthesis react like this and you are going to generate this dot. And it is uh, stabilized like with elimination of your R dot. So it is in that this kind of equilibrium. So this is called that uh, raft equilibrium because uh, reversible addition fragmentation. So this addition is uh, reversible and uh, with fragmentation, it, it is also happening like this so that R dot can be generated. And so this is your uh, addition. That first addition is happening. Then fragmentation is happening, right? So addition, fragmentation, and uh, and obviously they are reversible because uh, again they can react like this, followed by uh, uh, this. That's how uh, the reversible thing also is. is now it means uh, chain transfer. Obviously, the chain transfer is uh, simple. Because uh, kind of chain and uh, it you can activate uh, this species with a pre or what to say that pre initiation you can do with uh, some heating condition generally I think and you can re initiate your P dot and then again it can react uh, your monomer and again it's going to be going to with your uh, left attack radical intermediate the same way like this and it is your uh, uh, left uh, polymerization and chain transfer is kind of happening here you can see that PN and PN so they are two different uh, chain uh, polymers and that's how uh, that chain transfer is also is possible and lastly when you have this particular uh, uh, this is where that your this end and this end both end are having. Uh, so here, here you are seeing that right that this R is also uh, very much dependent how this reaction would go because this R dot also can react with your uh, another monomer and. There also it can grow and it can recombine like this. So you can expect to form two chains. There are n number of monomer units, there are n number of NMR units. So uh, with this particular reagent, in the both way that polymer can grow like this. So two different chains you are forming like this with help of this particular addition and fragmentation. And lastly, you can have a kind of intermediate, which is called perhaps the main equilibrium, when this PN and PM finally recombine the chain transfer, you can say, and this A in Bakuri, kind of a final termination, or final uh, monomer, you can say. Not only the, uh, uh, always that uh, recombination happens from the PN and PM, PM. So you simply uh, can take that H dot from your uh, uh, solvent. So if you're using some protein solvent, right? so that way it can also be quenched or double bond formation also is possible. So then uh, two uh, different uh, polymer you are going to form like PN and PM. So, uh, that's uh, the way you can control that raft polymerization. So now coming to this question, this is easy. So they just want to know that uh, Monsanto uh, catalyst, what is the Monsanto catalyst? So Monsanto process is used to uh, make uh, this uh, acetic acid. Form your methanol. 
so very much uh, well known uh, from industrial process. So this is the uh, catalytic cycle for them. So let's just uh, look into it. So uh, this particular thing is your and that the thing they want to do. Uh, like rhodium based uh, this is the uh, reactive uh, phase. So, uh, in the, your uh, reaction medium, you have a uh, methanol and uh, it can react with your uh, uh, rhodium uh, like uh, way to so some presence from HI or something. So, uh, HI to H2 conversion can be there. So, methanol can be converted to your uh, methyl uh, iodide, idomethane. And then it can go your uh, addition kind of thing, you can say. And from this uh, species, followed by uh, methyl migration. And uh, you have this thing. Now, you have one coordination uh, backend for CO. Again, you can uh, come to your uh, rhodium and make this species. Now, finally, you can have your uh, so her anti so anti to seen this uh, isomerization happens here, yeah? and finally, you uh, do that uh, inductive elimination and form this uh, oxidiodide thing. And here, H2O is there to convert iodide to acid. That's how methanol to uh, acetic acid you have uh, generated. And meanwhile, HI is again regenerated, and you can uh, see that how that your uh, reaction uh, goes and in the catalytic amount. And here, after reactive elimination, you just generate your active piece of wood. So that's how we send the catalytic catalyst. So this is that. Uh, yeah, it's here for LC so this is your particular lanta and it is a uh, reduced version of uh, this particular thing in uh, here so for hydro formylation hydroxylation that chemistry the most and uh medium medium chemistry is not used for uh the uh, process and they are not correct. Now we are just talking and uh, the question came that uh, regarding that particular not a polymerization. To choose the correct uh, combination of the type of polymerization uh, happens. So they given they have given that uh, protein protein molecule this particular double bond and uh, they have given two different conditions. With a uh, single nuclear nata polymerization and free radical polymerase. So, both of uh, the thing we have uh, now uh, learned extensively because nuclear nata catalyst. So, the first, my first lecture, I have uh, explained uh, that PGL uh, and free radical polymerization, the two days we have covered this part of it. So, now we know how things uh, work. With signal nata, previously we have read that. For uh, this particular reagent, TiCl3 and aluminium base, we generate this kind of isotactic or sometimes in otactic. So, their vanadium is used. So, for, uh, this is actually common thing for signal nata. So, linear chain with isotactic uh, polyprotein that we use. And we also read that why uh, this is happening. Uh, so, previous class we have uh, stably discussed upon. This particular uh, homomeric uh, mesoform and all. We, uh, so, there we are going to generate this kind of uh, thing where EZ thing is there for stabilization from pairing to your titanium lecan. So, that we have read already. And this is the stable form for that uh, transition stage so, so that we have generated. Isotactic one. There, we see you to be quite right. Also, we have a learned previously. So, uh, this kind of thing is isotactic. If you have uh, above, below, above, then below, 
which is uh, called no practice. And if there is no uh, no relation or uh, no order is there like this way. So between one of them is uh, below again one of them is above. So no order is there. Then it is called adaptive. So electricity we have learned. And uh, so uh, here it is called most triad because here uh, then can be passed. So uh, so they are homomeric and. Also, uh, this hydrogen that we have also read that this is uh, closer to your this kind of uh, methyl groups, but it is closer to your uh, hydrogen. So they are in different environment, all of the particular hydrogen. So there we are going to see different peak. But for these cases, they are actually having same chemical environment because they are also methyl, they are also methyl, so they are uh, you want null. So all of that I think we have learned. And here if we uh synthetic data, it's going to be adaptive. So C is going to be A. and why it is adaptive because for uh this uh radical polymerization, no such uh kind of transition state is there because no coordination chemistry is involved no uh what uh, member transition state is there so only thing so just uh reactivity is like radical is reacting with you know reactivity so this kind of stereochemical thing is not present for uh, radical polymerization they can grow anyway so there is no such control or pattern you can observe so they are going to have a tactic uh, environment so practice would be okay. it would be your option and now coming to this so hydroformylation so uh for that case we are just uh there i'm telling you that right and i think this is for hydroformylation uh, so hydroformylation uh the reaction is uh right conversion of uh this kind of uh alkene to Kind of linear aldehyde or minor amount of branch aldehyde in presence of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and your protons. So, uh, for uh, this hydroformylation, all of them are used actually. So, different uh, ligand is uh, they are only with uh, cobalt -based, based, rhodium based reagent. So different uh, 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 pH3 or ligand can be used so, to control this uh, ratio of linear branches. So, they can be used. So here you are seeing that uh, cobalt with uh, this uh, PPH3. So as an example for that, uh, rhodium based candidates is also used with different uh, 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 ligands. So let's look into that uh, mechanism. Okay? So uh, if you have this kind of uh, catalyst which is at reactive one, so it can as first one of the carbon monoxide uh, unit can be removed. So that should have some uh, vacuum uh, coordination and it can uh, react with your uh, olefinic. So uh, if square minus y square uh, and d and uh, i star of that olefin react, in that way and this is the uh, five background assembly that's how uh, 
power at uh, cobalt and olefinic bulk uh, followed by uh, when migration can happen uh, hydrogen migration can occur like this and you have this kind of system and this is majorly from a uh, some kind of that each node is transferred in this site then that branched also this one is also like that now you have that back end side so that uh, carbon monoxide can enter like this because here what happens is that oh uh, that alkyl migration like this happens again one vacuum side one carbon monoxide migration. now with uh, hydrogen because we are implementing hydrogen uh, gas so uh, this addition happens uh, like uh, this way so they are seen in fashion because uh, you know at first bulk kind of uh, thing formed like this then followed by uh, this so what happens is in the uh, sigma start uh, that uh, some uh, dx square minus y square dx y uh, that kind of uh, electron is donated to a sigma star, so that's how uh, that sigma bond can be broken, and cobalt hydrogen cobalt hydrogen bond can be broken. So that's how uh, some uh, donating properties should be always there uh, for the coordinating reagent of any molecule. So that's why B zero cannot clear. So some of the electron density should always be in your metal center, so that it can be donated to I star and you can have this kind of interaction now followed by your reactive elimination would lead to this kind of uh, product and for the branch one kind of branch aldehyde that can be formed and followed by cobalt can be uh, again coordinated with your uh, uh, one of the carbon monoxide will be coordinated with your cobalt and you can regenerate your uh, catalyst this particular catalysis thing occurred and with uh, uh, this is the mainly that uh, reactive species and with hydrogen and uh, thymar this can be found and uh, equilibrium is important. So for uh, this case you are always observed to have this particular each in your system and that's how you can uh, that and mainly cobalt and rhodium are used these are not uh, all of them are used for this uh, hydroformylation yeah. okay. now coming to this question so this is uh, very much easier so for reductive elimination uh, what of what are the uh, things should be there to happen uh, for happening reductive elimination so less sterically demanding because so they are not true because let's say this is your let's say this is your uh, metal it is having some charge and this is your let's say it's one two eliminating unit and another are ligand like this so when you have this uh let's see this kind of form so this uh and again if they are very much bulkier so they are having large interaction so that uh this kind of species can always want to get stabilized right so then only it will be faster and you would generate uh it's why as reductive eliminating so that and here you are going to generate this kind of uh, thing so that your uh, ligands are less and it, it is less crowded, less uh, stereogenic interaction is there. So if uh, already it is sterically, uh, de less sterically demanding, so it cannot accelerate your reactive elimination, right? Because already it's less sterically demanding, so it can always accommodate to other ligands. So yes, it is going to happen, but the rate would be slower. So this is not the right option to make reductive elimination more feasible. So no uh, pi accepting uh, ligand. So uh, again, uh, uh, not true because we need some uh, pi accepting ligand because we need to have uh, for pi acceptance, we need to have uh, always have this uh, 
back donation property right for by uh, this, this particular type of layer so which is very much necessary to build up some of the electron negative uh, charge over here to uh, so that it can actually actually so it's also not a very much too low oxidation uh, state on the metal like not too because uh, if it is low oxidation state uh, so highly oxidized uh, metals are not stable so then only uh, facilitate to have that reduction or reductivity so if it is already in low oxidation state so that feasibility is uh, low now it comes here it's the right option because high positive formal so it is if it is highly uh, formal charge so system is very much unstable and it obviously uh, the systems like this prefer to uh, neutral form and the formal charge is always going to be uh, lessened by uh, minus two when we are going to do that deductibility so that this particular condition will be the sign of uh, having one deductive limitation is not right so the general question of uh, deductive limitation and so this is called uh, your that uh, sigma bond metal okay so here oxidative addition cannot happen because it's zirconium uh, plus two or two uh, Carbonium four. Carbonium four plus Carbonium four plus, which is actually D zero. So no uh, density is there in the zirconium, uh, so it cannot donate any electron with sigma star. Right? If this donation cannot happen, the oxidative addition is simply not possible. So oxidative addition uh, not possible. Alpha elimination, uh, so how it can be done. Alpha elimination, it also not true. Uh, here the thing is done. The product is actually, this kind of uh, thing is actually formed. Kind of thing. Alpha uh, elimination is not uh, happening and uh, deterioration of thing. GP is not deteriorated. Use the option. No, let's discuss about that. So, uh, this is let's say your uh, metal center and this is that uh, any alkane or deuterium hydrogen. That's so they, when they react, uh, this kind of thing happens. Uh, this thing and this. So then, if we uh, do, we can uh, consider that positive addition and reactive elimination can happen, but not like that, because uh, uh, here you can see that uh, undergoes uh for a uranium uh, methyl complex with hydrocarbon. So they are actually famous for this kind of. Uh, Sigma bond metal. So this reaction is mainly observed complexes where uh, for, uh, we are saying that D0 system, D0 conformation. So like a uh, candenium 3, zirconium 4, nubium 5, or tantalum 5, uh, and some F bond, uh, F, uh, F block element uh, also participate for that. Because these are uh, zero action, D0 system for that. So what happens at first, uh, so association happens uh, like this way. So this sigma bond uh, electron just uh, donated like uh, in the metal center like this. And this kind of uh, uh, thing is formed. Then uh, this is that height like transition state. And after that, this association happens. So this is called your sigma bond metal. This is not such. Uh, so association, dissociation, chemistry only, not uh, additional elements because uh, the thermal size is quite changing here 
So we are just telling that when you have D0, the addition cannot happen because the electron needs to be donated to that sigma star or sigma star mainly. Without that, uh, that oxidative addition cannot happen because that bond cannot be free. So we need to have some D electron. So that's how uh, this is uh, correct because it does not occur in D0 system. For vacant side of the metal is uh, prerequisite. Obviously, because when we are doing oxidative addition, we are increasing that uh, coordination number by so if metal half we are we are making it M N plus. Because two coordination side we are blocking. So obviously, it would need to have vacant coordination. Right, more more electron reach. Center is more facile for the reaction, obviously, because uh, D electron needs to be donated to sigma star. So that's why we require some uh, electronic richness in the metal. Right? So uh, ABC would be the option. So there is a decreasing electron count of the metal complex. Uh, due, due obviously, we want because the electrons is still in the uh, kind of uh, one formation is here and two electrons is still in your system not it is it is a decrease and uh, two. coming to today's uh, last so there they ask what correct statement then for this kind of uh, so this is you can uh, consider this reaction to happen first Kind of migration happens you now you have that vacant side and pph3 can enter uh, like this so, uh, we always know that when migration happens it is a uh, cis in this uh, cis, 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 uh, uh, migration and so that when pph3 happens uh, occurs or enters in your uh, molecule it will be cis center and which is obviously the in a switch form because that's the way from that's the position from where that my first migration happened. Right? So that's where it is. So because in the trans system this kind of intermediate stream button cannot be formed. So that's where it should be switch because uh here you are seeing this right because this should be uh uh oh so that's why this two are in cis should be cis so uh the product is uh, there are no migration they have shown just shown that coordination but uh, here uh, it is not uh, the thing this kind of migration happens nucleophilic attack not nucleophilic attack because ps3 is not at all reacting with your uh, carbon monoxide so not nucleophilic attack so this kind of chemistry should happen So it is also not true. So both substrate and product are having nutrient. This is very much true because let's say here you are going to have one PPH3. So let's count that. So present it is one eight, and we have uh this import five five carbon monoxide, right? Means 18 electron is now coming to your product so uh, 7 and 8 is 1 7 plus 1 and again uh, 5 uh, carbon monoxide is here again 18 it is also so the right option that will be for this kind of thing to do a and b so that's how you can solve uh, this kind of question. So these parts are easy. Uh, so uh, mainly this uh, polymerization, uh, they are 
properly. Right? Mainly, I have to transcribe because they are obviously previously known in some courses. And so, these things are new, and we have sensibly discussed on that and solved uh, questions related to that. So, now today, I don't have any more lecture uh, or slides. So, obviously, if you have any question now, you can ask for clear doubt or otherwise we can close to this session if you have any question please ask now or any suggestion any then you can send me so that uh, but having trouble with can uh, we can do that now fine so seems like uh, no issues are there so anyway uh, if you have any question anytime you can just uh, tell me or in the in the forum you can write or directly you can mail me in this mail address so today we can close our session and thank you for joining so we would continue our discussion in uh, next uh, class which is uh, Friday six to eight yesterday. So again, thank you for joining. Uh, uh, see you in the next.